I understand that the stars are living beings like planets. How is their consciousness? How does their mind work? Are they aware of our existence? In itself, that question is more appropriate for Yasti, because she knows these things very like firsthand. But within what I have learned, all consciousness is composed of other simple ones, both in the same plane as in other planes and in timelines, which are not separated or isolated from each other, but rather influence each other all the time. So a human body, to use it as a reference because any other works, is a set of separate consciousness or individuals which together make up the human body. Those individuals are the cells. Each one contains all the integral organs that a total human body would have. They are called organelles, but they are all there in their form, from the gastric, nervous, reproductive and excretory system where, for example, the reproductive system would be the nucleus and the nervous system or brain would be the cell membrane, the outer part, and the mitochondria would be in part the energy system. Then each cell, in its own small way, creates its own understanding about its environment that surrounds it chemical, toxicological and oxygenation, and each one will take its own measures for its conservation as a living being. If they are in a conductive environment, they flourish and give way to the health of the entire human individual that contains them. If the environment is not conductive and it is highly toxic, the cells will do everything possible not to succumb to this situation, then they do not die naturally and remain alive as long as possible, as an example or separate note, causing the majority of cancers. All the consciousness of each individual cell according to their internal programming come together to form as a group or cooperative community, what would be called a complex multicellular body, or human body in this case, as with a human body or any other. And taking into account that everything is energetically connected and interdependent, just as the consciousness of the human being is itself, the totality of the consciousness of each of the cells that compose it, and emphasizing that each cell will have a connection to the etheric field and the connection with other cells of other bodies, human or not, being exactly the same with a planet. That is to say, without neglecting that it has its own consciousness, an individual I, it is the result of the consciousnesses that compose it as cells inside. And the planet itself is part of a larger organism. And that from another major component or explanation from the material side that we are all one consciousness, the source, the whole. Side note, each cell will have its own connection or version of connection with the etheric or spiritual side. That is to say that the pineal gland, contrary to what is said, is not the only point in the body that is responsible for extrasensory perception and the connection with the unified field, but rather the whole body as a whole gives or receives said connection. The pineal gland is only the most obviously active element within a system, within a whole, so that of decalcifying the pineal gland is something quite simplistic. The truth is that it is necessary to improve the connection of the whole body as a unified whole, and in this process the pineal gland will obviously benefit in a way that would be far superior to the localized form of decalcification. So, a planet would be made up of all the consciousness, people that inhabit in it, and a star for all the consciousnesses of the different planets that surround it. Yes, everything is interconnected. The star of a constellation, the constellation of a cluster, 
the cluster of a galaxy, the galaxy of its local group, and so we go until we reach the whole, the consciousness that unifies everything. Aha, uh -huh, I see, joining all together. Whoa, thank you, Aneka. How interesting how everything is interconnected. Every plant, every ant, every little cell that lives on a planet is part of its consciousness and part of the great whole. Thank you. Can you communicate with a star? If I remember correctly, you said that the Earth, the planets, communicated through sacred geometry. Also the stars? Yes, but we don't see concrete evidence of engaging in a conversation with a planet, in human understandable terms, on our scale of consciousness. It has its own way. In other words, it is as if a single cell in your pancreas wanted to tell you something. It influences, but you more towards the cell than the cell towards you as consciousness. Even so, some people do claim to be able to have a conversation with a planet. It is that, in itself, everything is geometric. Everything is a mathematically understandable relationship. It would be the only way to have a common language. You said the other day that the stars are cooperating with each other. How is this cooperation? How is the information passed between them? Is it like the trees in a forest? Yes, the stars are like consciousness that are intertwined. That field that intertwines them all is like a web of scalar electromagnetic energy flow, that is, of all densities and frequencies, that interconnects everything from the etheric side, like an energetic thread which goes from each star connecting it with all the others. These energy threads can be exploited into the form of portals and are called wormholes or Einstein-Rosenberg bridges. Therefore, we have explained how a portal in a sun can be used to go from one point to another using the ether within, because all the suns are connected. So you can enter with a ship in a solar portal, sunspots. Once inside, if you have an energetic map, you can navigate said cobweb to get to another sun closer to your destination. This is widely used to this day as a transit system between races and interstellar races of less technological evolution than Taigeta. For example, since Taigeta has ships which manufacture their own wormholes at will and we do not need solar portals or nothing like that. And yes, it is like the trees in the forest, as they do too. Would the connection then be similar to the communication that neurons have in the human brain? Yes, it is exactly the same system, because it is based on exactly the same pattern of energy formation or harmonic dynamics of a frequency, using Yashi terminology. So, do they balance each other, like the trees that exchange water according to their needs, among others? This is correct. Yes, they balance, they communicate, they talk, they exchange energy. I have a question about something you said before. When you use the suns to move around, is entering a sun as a portal like jumping into the ether, meaning there is no travel time, only the crew seat time? Yes, exactly. The sun or suns are the ones that provide the energy and the energetic direction to which the ship will go. The ship only has to be consistent with that energetic direction, so that for simple frequencies, since equal frequencies tend to be more of the same, then the ship will go in the direction that the crew wants. But for us, it is not necessary, and it also seems dangerous to us to use solar portals, because the suns are not static, and they change their energy dynamics for their own reasons, as stated above. I understand now, thank you. You commented that when a star dies, it becomes a gravity hole. What happens next to this hole? Does it stay like this?
Is it a portal to where? Do they still connect with the same as when they were a star? Yes, it is still the same or connected as it was when it was a star. As everything is changing and depending on the flow of energy between the connected stars, this gravity hole can get bigger, turning into a black hole, or it can become less and less strong until it dissolves in space, remaining as if it would never have been a star there. Or even a gravity hole can grow back and reignite as a star. In itself, the genesis of the stars is something like that precisely. It receives a lot of energy at that point, energy in form of gravity. Then it begins a dynamic of electromagnetic flow at that point and receives from below through the wormholes that connect it with other stars. That energy, and even energy already shaped as matter, as are gases of all kinds, which become plasma and combined with the electromagnetic aspect of a star, it becomes what we see as the Sun. As Yaskis Baru would say, it has the harmonics of its specific frequency, so that it is formed at that point or concentration of gravity in Spain. And what relationship do the stars have with the planets? They are part of the same system. They are like its energetic daughters, points of attention of a creative intention. In itself, everything is on purpose, nothing fortitious. You can only see a mathematical logic in everything and see that as the cause when it is the effect. The suns feed the planets with light and energetic stability, and that makes the so-called organic life can be formed in them, which in turn, feed their consciousness as symbiosis. As for energetic connections, the planets are filled with portals or a main portal which connect it to the Sun and to the other planets of its system. How beautiful connection with the whole? And with all this, what specific function does the central Sun of a galaxy have? It is that everything is connected more than function, it is the point of greatest concentration of energy of all kinds. We can say gravitational, but gravity is a flow of consciousness in the ether. In other words, the center of a galaxy is the point where all consciousness is concentrated of everything that is in said galaxy. As it is thoroughly formed, the nucleus in the motor of the galaxy and of everything that is in it. Everything from that galaxy and in that galaxy starts from there and it is formed there. Excuse me, energetic daughters? What do you mean? Are you referring to the planets or the stars? I imagine the stars more as mothers. It's like the planet, energetically, are the daughters of their star. Form of expression more than anything. It is that I am thinking of the Earth, la Tierra, as feminine. What is really a star? How is its shape? Understanding that from here, we only perceive 60% of reality in 5D. As everything is absorbed in shape, it is a very concentrated scalar electromagnetism emission, outflow, like a black hole is incoming energy flow. But it is not a thermonuclear ball, as human science describes it. It is something much more complex. They are not burning hot gases, and its energy does not come from within itself, but from the unified field, and will only grow or become extinct according to a complex internal energy system from the field, which interconnects all the suns. The sun is an energetic exit hole, but because it is a multiplane, multidimensional scalar, a hole is perceived as a sphere, not as a flat disk. But human science does not conceive that it draws energy from other planes that are not visible and not understood by them. So they go towards the explanation more in line with their level of understanding. Thermonuclear ball. So in itself, the sun is not hot as they describe it. 
It does not have high temperatures in that way. Although all electromagnetic plasma compressed at one point, like a sun, does produce heat and a lot, but it is not what generates said heat. So, it is safe to approach a sun with a ship, but it is like going against the current with a river flow against you. But this is solved using the same ship to change its mass with the engines to something that affects it less, that solar flux, known on Earth as solar wind, but it comprises more components not visible to a human science. That is why you can approach a sun and enter it using sunspots, because they are points with little or any output magnetic flux, or only of a certain frequencies. So the planet do not depend on the distance from a sun to receive heat from it, being that the human theory of the point within a solar system where a planet must be to be habitable is false. The Earth does not have a pleasant temperature because the sun warms it. Rather, the scalar radiation from the sun is translated by the Earth atmosphere and its own energy field to produce, as a reaction, heat. For this reason, it can be very hot on the surface of the planet, in a desert for example, but on the same day, at the same time over the desert, in an airplane, it is many degrees below zero. Yeah, I understand. That's why you commented that if the sun were a thermonuclear ball, it would go against the law of thermodynamics. Yes. How is heat transmitted through a void like space? It contradicts itself, human science, but it doesn't seem to bother anyone with these obvious problems. And space is not a void either, by the way. You don't need a pressurized suite to be in space. They show space to you as a cold place where if a space suite breaks, they would freeze in seconds. Let's see, scientists, explain to me. Where or how is that body heat transferred from the astronaut that freezes in seconds if there is no means of heat transmission? In space, cold is not a problem. Why is it cold in the first place? If there is supposedly nothing to measure, so they would only measure the temperature of the same thermometer. What happens is that human science defines cold as the absence of molecular movement, and with this rule they even say that the temperature of interstellar space is absolute zero or minus 273.15 degrees. The cold of a space is not a problem for any spaceship or crew. Heat is. Because they can't easily radiate excess heat from a ship. That's the problem. So, in spaceships like ours, the systems are very complex to transform excess heat into another reusable energy form. We convert heat into electricity. Why you don't need a pressurized suite? Sorry, Aneka, I didn't understand very well. Because in human science, they say that without the pressurized suite in the gases naturally contained in the blood would tend to extend due to the lack of atmospheric pressure. Because the human body is pressurized to one bar, or a barometric measurement equivalent to atmospheric pressure at sea level. Ergo, Atmospheric pressure wants to compress the body by its weight of the entire atmosphere and to compensate for this, the body is pressurized precisely to one bar, which is equivalent to neutralizing that pressure to zero. Therefore, if you rise or fall from sea level quickly, you get plucked ears and other harmless bodily phenomena. But, if you have a human body pressurized to one bar and you take it into space, you will have a barometric measurement of outward pressure. Then the body explodes, because it expands due to the lack of atmospheric pressure to compensate for it. Therefore, in itself, before the blood explodes, it will tend to boil, because the gases contained in the blood will expand. 
This problem is also seen with divers. Therefore, they must rise slowly so that their bodies get used to the new pressure, releasing gases in a controlled and progressive way before they cause damage to tissues, veins and arteries. Now, in space, all you have to do is accustom your body to a barometric pressure equivalent to zero. For that, you only need an hyperbaric chamber, where the subject can release the internal gases of the body up to equivalent to zero pressure. In other words, the equivalent of a space. In itself, this is simpler than accustoming a body to the pressure necessary to perform deep diving work, something that is done daily on Earth. So, to be in space without a spaceship, that is to say, on a spacewalk, you don't need complex pressurized suites. The only thing you really need is a respirator with the correct mixture and at the correct low pressure with recirculating air, like diving, no tanks, a rebreather, and for a suite, only basic protector, but technically you can wear your favorite shirt and sneakers. This makes us laugh, but also sad. Wow, how dramatic we are. There are people who have just studied the glows of that seat, and they would never work, because pressurized they couldn't even move their fingers. It is absurd. Thank you very much, Aneka. Now I understand better. So the cold is not a problem for the person? Not a problem, because from 3D or 5D in space, there is no transmission medium for heat. Moreover, if you are working in space outside, repairing the ship, you have a tendency to overheat and even have nausea due to the body overheating. We do have space suits, but they are simpler and closer to the body offer another kind of protection and have cooling systems for astronauts doing physical work outside. Basically, they have a system of tubes with fluid that recirculates throughout the suit cooling the astronaut, but we have other high-tech ones which use magnetic frequencies to cool the astronauts. But the cold is not a problem, it is the heat. As you can see, our concepts of space differ greatly from humans. What makes increase the temperature of people in space? Are there no problems with solar radiation? Very easy. It is not that something causes them that their temperature increases, but that their own body, which is designed to radiate unnecessary heat, cannot do so because there is no air and there is no transmission medium. Therefore, the temperature gradually builds up. But it's not something strange. It is pure thermodynamics. It is the same with spaceships or with anything else. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed into something else. Therefore, we convert heat into electrical energy, which will be used in anything. And does anything happen if you spend a lot of time just in spacewalk then? Or you just get very warm, like on the beach? Yes, you get overheated and that is dangerous for the body. You overheat like having a slight fever. Then a stronger one. If it exceeds 40 degrees, serious problems begin. And by continuing to rise, it can cause brain and organ damage. On the beach, you can still radiate with sweat and the breeze, not in space. You suffer thermal shock, but for that you use space suits. But it's more like this, like a second skin, not like those of NASA. So, if you have to do a long-term operation, do you wear space suits? Yes, generally for protection. Although it is possible not to wear anything for very short periods of time, it is not recommended. The uniform suit is used. It has many functions. 
It doesn't only keep the temperature at the correct temperature. It cools you if you are hot or it warms you if you are cold, in space or wherever. It also shields against all kinds of impacts, from debris to bullets. It becomes rigid in a nanosecond, becoming impenetrable. If you fall from somewhere, it avoids fractures. It is made of high-tech, self-healing, polymorphic resin fabric. And how do you breathe? To breathe, it is with a transparent helmet and a recirculating tank on the back, like the diving one, but smaller. You don't escape the transparent helmet, although you could have it only in your mouth and that's it but it is very uncomfortable and even dangerous. Also, the system must be calibrated for space or zero pressure, or the respirator itself can damage your lungs. Thank you very much, Aneka. Of course, I understand oxygen is important. When a star dies, becoming then a gravity hole, what happens to the planets that orbit it? It absorbs them. It becomes part of its mass when the dynamics or balance that existed between them when it was a star changed or stopped. I mean, they are destroyed. And what about the consciousnesses of the planets and their inhabitants? What process do they go through? It is a process that would be like of death. It passes to other things, to other planes. But the consciousness of the planets themselves is closely linked to the one of their sun, being part of the same. And they do not take it as something tragic, because that is human thought or interpretation. And before that, the energetic dynamics of the planets change with the star itself. Ergo, when the collapse happens, for a long, long time there has been no biological life there, in them. It is a gradual process, and unique for each case. Ah, look, I was just going to ask this. And can this be detected living in 5D? For example, being able to realize that this will happen and move to another planet or something like that but I understand that there would no longer be anyone living there. Yes, and limited from 3D too. But it is only a point of view or perspective in particular, taking into account that from other planes, the stars are always there, being outside of time, because they are very definitely high consciousnesses of high densities, where there is no time as it is known they are only being destroyed from the point of view of low densities, who observes the process. Aha, uh -huh, I understand. And at what level of consciousness or evolution is a star? I can't quantify it. Again, saying a density with a number would be inappropriate and limited. In themselves, they are in all densities, However, these are understood, from the most basic, just being, to the highest, as consciousness of the whole, already practically being the source itself, but still preserving something of its own identity as a star. That is what they are so interconnected with each other energetically and in a scalar way, that is, of very high densities, which is described as wormholes, which interconnects the stars all of them. In itself, this network of connections between the stars can be interpreted as what determines that all of them, all the stars, are both unique and particular and at the same time they are in single thing, a single cluster of consciousness. A single cosmic super being with each star as a node of itself, interconnected through high densities of the ether a super being, that it is in all densities and that it is impossible to understand by the normal mind. A great something which could be said to be the galaxy itself, like being seen by or from the position of 3D, all connected 
forming a single consciousness that sees or perceives itself as someone, the galaxy, and at the same time connected with others as if each of the galaxies were a single star because there are so many interconnected as the stars are to form another even greater super being with even more consciousness and down the same thing happens too because each being that exists with consciousness is not a single being but the sum of the consciousnesses that form it consciousnesses from their simplest point of view simple that come together and add up to form a more complex one. Mm -hmm.